Okay, let's talk about assessment requirements. Now, this is both as it's not really a standalone document. The unit's a standalone document because it's got an audience in its own right as a document that helps employers and industry in general clarify workplace requirements. The assessment requirements though go with a particular unit. So each unit has its own related assessment requirements. In the old units we had things like evidence guides. We don't have them anymore. There's nothing in the unit about assessment. It's all now in the assessment requirements. There's three main components of the assessment requirements. One is performance evidence, what the person has to do. The second is knowledge evidence, what the person has to know, but importantly, what they have to know in order to be able to do what the performance evidence is asking for. So not just knowledge or theory for the sake of having it, the knowledge that is required to do the work function. And thirdly, we have a heading called assessment conditions. And these are the conditions under which assessment must take place. Those conditions might be about where, such as in a workplace or in a specified workplace, in a particular type of workplace, or they might be about who, who is actually doing the assessment, as well as meeting the National Vet Regulator standards for uh, assessment, what an assessor has to have. It is possible for a skills council now, as the training package developer, to specify additional requirements of the actual assessor. And those requirements could be in terms of the qualifications they hold or in terms of their experience, currency in the industry. So what you're going to see is greater clarity about each of those things. In the performance evidence in particular, which is specifying the required product or process evidence, there's a requirement the training package specifies the frequency and or volume of that evidence. So for example, needing to conduct a training program three times, needing to change a tyre five times, or needing to change a tyre on five different types of trucks. Now, they're just examples off the top of my head. They're not taken from specific units, but you get the idea. The notion of frequency of evidence too, there are some training packages now which are putting in things like the performance evidence needs to be shown over a period of time in a workplace. So they would have a number of days or hours or shifts of work that they would want that evidence demonstrated. And they're just different ways of trying to get at consistency of performance, I suppose. In the knowledge evidence, it's important to note that the evidence needs to be directly related to the performance criteria or to the range of conditions. So if the range of conditions was talking about different types of road surface, for instance, it would be logical to have as the required knowledge here in the knowledge evidence, someone knew something about the geology of the soil types in roads. In the assessment conditions, the, which is a, a mandatory field, as all of them are mandatory fields, it specifies the conditions under which evidence for assessment must be gathered. You're not going to see statements in there like um, workplace assessment is preferred or simulations uh, can be used um, in preferable circumstances or something that isn't clear. Because this is a condition, it will be a condition. So it might say something like uh, assessment of the performance evidence must happen in a particular type of workplace. It might say that the assessor requires three years recent industry experience. The Industry Skills Council, through its consultation process, will determine what goes in each of these areas. 
What you will see as an RTO, because this is an assessment requirement, it should make the writing of your assessment tools easier, it should be more straightforward, it should be easier to see what it is that's actually required for assessment. But keep in mind, this is the assessment requirements for a specific unit of competency. You must look at the unit as well. You can't just take the assessment requirements on its own because it doesn't make sense. It's designed to be read with the unit of competency. So that means all the elements and performance criteria. At the end of the assessment requirements, there will be a links section. And again, it takes you to the companion volume implementation guide. There will be some advice in that implementation guide about assessment often around things like definitions of terms that are used here. If they have used the term workplace or work site, there will no doubt be an explanation of that in the companion volume implementation guide. The Skills Council may also have produced other companion volumes that give you more information about assessment and how to approach it in this industry.